So I was recently in the market for a laptop, which is an area of tech I haven't really paid attention to for about a decade. Still rocking my 2015 MacBook Retina, although sparingly as it's from the Stangate era, and looks almost as bad as that favorite pair of underwear you just can't let go of, and crashes more than a panda trying to do literally anything. And I've also been getting this itch to get away from my current office environment, especially with summer coming up, it's getting very hot, and I love my powerhouse of a desktop, the Ryzen CPU, Dragon Princess 4070 Super, but none of that is really necessary to accomplish my most important task, which is writing scripts for the main YouTube channel. Of course, with videos, there's also the voiceover, video editing, and thumbnails, but those are never tasks I find myself procrastinating, or even things I would want to do on a laptop. Rather, it's always the writing that bottlenecks production and is the hardest thing to focus on, which is made even more difficult with Discord, Steam, emulators, Photoshop, just all of the shit installed on one system, when really all I need is Obsidian and a photo viewer. 90% of the time, if I'm not using one of those tools, I'm just not writing anything. And I've tried all the tricks, web blockers, focus modes, different users for work and gaming, Pomodoro timers, and while those have been useful, sometimes my monkey brain is just too powerful to abide by the restrictions. And I'm a big believer that environment influences behavior. So having one area in PC where I do my writing, gaming, socializing, casual streaming, relaxing, watching movies, uh, just doesn't work out too well for my productivity or even just mental health. So I started my search for a simple productivity laptop, specifically something that physically takes me away from my desktop during the day and provides a more focused and limited environment for actually getting stuff done. At first I looked into buzzwords I've heard over the years, Zenbooks, Chromebooks, Surface Books, which led me down this product research rabbit hole, only to learn that a modern laptop is apparently the most expensive piece of shit you can buy, and with a budget of around $500, it wasn't looking good. But eventually I found a light at the end of this portable computing rectum. ThinkPads, a community of people still using these decade-old computers that have stood the test of time because they're durable, modular, easy to repair, and have great Linux capability, offering an alternative to Windows 11, which in its current state is more bloated than my favorite computer games. And all of these factors really appealed to me. It was a laptop that was practical and only cost $180 for a good condition used model on eBay, and that's on the high end. So I ended up going with the T480 model, which I saw recommended the most often referred to as the last great ThinkPad, before Lenovo started soldering RAM to the motherboards and just kind of lost the plot. But ultimately what sold me on this model was that it had everything I needed. An i7 CPU, wasn't too chonky like the IBM era, although those are still pretty badass machines, and had plenty of upgrade options to improve and maintain its performance. So having built more than a handful of computers, I thought this thing was just incredible. You can easily swap out most of its components, and if anything dies, you're literally seven Phillips head screws away from accessing the problem. And then of course you have actual ports like a full-size HDMI, Ethernet, USB-A, and an SD card reader. It's amazing. So I picked up the laptop itself for $200 after shipping and taxes on eBay, and after it arrived and inspecting it, making sure everything worked, I then got a 1TB NVMe drive, 32GB of RAM, and a dual pipe cooler made for the GPU model, and of course the Mr. Clean Magic Erasers for $161, which puts us at $361 all in, and I'll probably end up selling the original RAM, SSD, and heatsink. They all work, I just have no use for them maybe like $10 each, so closer to $330, which left me around $150 under budget. So getting into the upgrades now, super easy installation, and look at the inside of this bottom plate. It looks like someone was eating Korean barbecue off this thing, although it's probably just some discoloration from heat, I hope. And sorry for the bad camera angles, if you want a more detailed guide and a better look at the board for these upgrades, I will leave some links in the description to videos that I found helpful during the process and just sort of followed along with. So the RAM and SSD are in, now all that's left is the dual pipe cooler, and I also got some 1 8 inch foam tape to cover the GPU contact, and that was included in the 161 for the upgrades, just something safe to avoid making direct contact with the empty socket on the motherboard important for not destroying the machine. I used some towels and isopropyl alcohol to clean away the original thermal paste and also remove the paste that came pre-applied to the new cooler as it was making contact with the bubble wrap it came shipped in and I have no idea how long it's been applied there so I just used my own paste that I knew was good and just a dot on each contact and then carefully attached the cooler and tightened down the screws in a star pattern to ensure even contact 
close everything back up and we're good to go. So after these upgrades, I am really satisfied with its performance, but I'm still playing things by ear, seeing how everything holds up, and I'm considering a better display, new batteries, and a glass trackpad. Although none of that is super necessary right now, but I love that those are options you get with an older ThinkPad. And it's it for anyone considering doing similar upgrades to a T480. You don't need to buy the fastest and most expensive memory on the market, as this is a going on 8 year old laptop, so the connections and motherboard have limitations. With the max RAM speed being 2400 MHz, anything higher than this will be downclocked I believe, and for the read and write speeds of your SSD, I don't know the exact number, but you're not going to be getting those Gen 4 7000 MBs per second. I think the sweet spot for this machine is around 1800, so just stick with the Gen 3 NVMe and you'll be good. So now it's finally time to install an OS, and going into this project, I wasn't even seriously considering Linux, although it's a pretty hard topic to avoid when researching ThinkPads, it's like the cult within the cults. But when I was initially inspecting the T480 just to make sure it worked, it booted into a Windows 11 installer, and I knew I was going to replace this original drive anyway, so I did the setup to test things out. But after about 30 seconds of running a fresh Windows install, I knew this just wasn't an option, as basic functions ran like complete shit and I was getting a pop-up every 5 seconds about a OneDrive, Copilot, or some other Windows nonsense. And I know you can deep load Windows to its bare bones, that's basically how I run my main desktop, but for this hardware, and just out of curiosity, it made sense to try Linux. And I'm not sure if it's just that phenomenon of once you start driving a car, you start seeing your car everywhere, but it definitely seems like Linux is riding a wave right now. Windows is shooting itself in the foot, the PewDiePie video was pretty good, and now half of my YouTube recommended is Linux and ThinkPad videos. So I started out watching a ton of Linux content, what it is, how to install, what are the different distros, how to use the terminal, all that good stuff, and I started to see the pros and cons pretty clearly and why Linux is good but not mainstream, especially after using it for myself. As in nearly every why you should switch to Linux video, they always say it's the freedom over your PC. And while that is true, what that freedom means to the average PC user is that now everything you do is going to be more tedious and complicated, or just not work. But I guess that's the price of freedom and open source, which is essentially what the Linux freedom means, at least to my understanding. Allowing you to view and change whatever you want in the source code of your system and open source programs, granted you understand how to do that, which is why the Linux community is so rooted in programming and used for all of the important computing. You can just make what you want. But that also makes it pretty intimidating for the curious bystanders that are kind of fed up with Windows and want an alternative, they want a taste of that freedom, although just don't feel smart enough to use Linux or to control it terminal, but I hope to show you through my experience that you don't need to understand all of it, or even a little, to use Linux and to find some sort of value out of it. So step one is choosing a distro. I like to think of these as different UIs or even difficulties for different kinds of users, but all being distributions of Linux. I know that's not exactly what they are, but bear with me here. Some of them give you a complete desktop environment with drivers and an app store, and others just give you a terminal and say figure it out yourself, or more accurately would be build it yourself. It's like the difference between playing with an action figure and bionicles. With the action figure, you can have fun, you can pose it, you might be able to duct tape something to it to customize a little bit or paint the decals, but then you have the bionicle kid that combined 15 bionicles from home and spent a lot of time making this thing and had to understand the basics of engineering, but he made something really cool that was uniquely his own. So in an effort to keep things simple, I consulted the choosing a Linux distro flowchart and quickly landed on Mint and Ubuntu, although there is a lot more to choose from than just those. And when learning about distros, you'll inevitably come across Arch. This is the Bionicle distro, the one for the chads, the elites, the PewDiePies that earn the bragging rights of using it. And while I see the appeal of something like Arch and the satisfaction that would come from building your distro from the ground up, I didn't buy this ThinkPad to learn Arch or to spend my summer compiling and making the perfect rice. That's what the Arch Bros called desktop customization, I don't know why, but some of them do look pretty dope. But my goal in all of this was to have a simple machine dedicated for writing, and knowing myself and how easily I fall for procrastination porn, I feel like even experimenting with distro writing would introduce a whole rabbit hole of distractions on the writing machine. I could easily see myself sitting down to get work done, but then thinking, oh let me just adjust my color scheme, my taskbar is uneven, let me change my NeoFetch icon, animate it, we're just constantly trying to fix issues that aren't a priority. So avoiding that, I began testing out Mint and Ubuntu on a virtual machine, just trying them out. And right off the bat, neither of them felt great, I understood the potential, but didn't know how to use it. So I spent maybe a day or so watching terminal tutorials, how to navigate good to know commands, Although I started to realize I didn't understand the practical uses for a lot of this stuff. 
so instead of trying to learn everything all at once and prepare myself, I think you just gotta jump into it and not stress about what you don't know and take it one step at a time and try to use the system as you would normally and when you encounter a problem or question, then go search for that specific issue. And over time, you'll build up this experience and start to be able to solve problems on your own as it's more likely you'll remember a command or navigation that helped you solve a real problem and not just something you heard 28 minutes into a beginner Linux tutorial, more of a project learning approach. But after testing out the basic distros, they just weren't doing it for me, so I dove a little deeper into my options and came across Cosmic OS, a very clean, modern looking distro based on Pop OS, which is based on Ubuntu and uses the GNOME desktop environment, but I guess the pop devs were like, nah, we want to make our own desktop, so they ditched GNOME and are developing Cosmic, which is currently in alpha, but from my experience has been extremely stable, but again, still in alpha, so occasionally there is an issue that is clearly a bug, or just some things don't work yet, like passing audio through HDMI. Which is something I learned as Cosmic was the main distro I ended up installing on the ThinkPad, because it was just the most appealing to me and came built in with features made more accessible, like how Arch users are always showing off their super clean Hyperland tiling systems. Cosmic comes with tiling baked right into it, and for the week I've been using it, it's great and even has tile stacking. Sure, it may not be as fast, pretty, or minimal as Hyperland, but good enough for me and works out of the box, even if that makes me a normie. So the first thing I did in Cosmic was explore the system and optimize the UI as I don't like the panel at the top and dock at the bottom, a bit too macOS for me, and I just like one taskbar, which wasn't an obvious option, and sent me down this completely unnecessary rabbit hole of trying to uninstall, dash to dock a GNOME extension, messing up my display managers and OBS, getting kicked out of Cosmic, then needing to get back in, but I eventually came across this VTuber tutorial who showed that you can actually very simply combine the dash and dock in the Cosmic settings. It's just a little hidden, took like 15 seconds, and was exactly what I was looking for. I was then able to install most of the programs I needed through the Cosmic store, which seemed really simple almost too simple, so I tried to get more in-depth with the system by performing tasks I knew how to do with Windows, again more of a project learning approach, for example creating a boot drive. Pretty simple process, so I was like okay let's try to do the same exact thing on Linux. And that's when I began to learn that any simple task on Windows is going to be about 45 to an hour task on Linux, at least when starting out. And now I was getting into the terminal commands, program installs, snap packs, flat packs, troubleshooting, Realizing the snap pack install is kind of broken and sucks with errors and daemon issues, so uninstalling the snap and then doing it another way that actually worked. This specific issue was with Auto CPU Freak, the best alternative to a manual CPU undervolt I could find on Linux, which dynamically controls your CPU's frequency depending on load and power mode, which helps a lot with battery life on a laptop, which apparently is not very good on Linux. And even with CPU Freak installed, my max battery life on Cosmic is about 4-5 to five hours, which is still usable. So after wrestling with the terminal, wiki pages, and tutorials, I finally got the system in a very usable state, where I felt confident doing everything I needed to on it without a Windows dual boot, and even had started incorporating the system into my workflow, with this entire script being written on the ThinkPad, as well as some multitasking like screen recordings. Which has felt pretty good, being able to sit on the couch or at a spare desk or even outside to focus on writing, which is also aided by the laptop form factor and Linux UI, where everything is just very keyboard focused and while the urge to open YouTube and waste time is still there, it's a lot less enticing on the system and with the change of environment. And to make using it as easy and seamless as possible, I added a sync feature to Obsidian using the Git plugin and a repository that auto syncs my Vault through devices. So whatever I write on the ThinkPad will be there on my desktop and I'm not even signed into an Obsidian account and I can have a Linux and Windows computer communicating in real time, updating on either device. That's a very epic plugin, so I'll leave a link to that tutorial in the description. So after trying my hand at Linux and using it to work on projects for over a week now, my first impressions are that it's a pain in the ass, but also kind of a miracle, a free open source platform that can be packaged to fit all kinds of users and can be developed by anyone. And that's pretty incredible. For me, it's been a solid alternative to Windows, especially on older hardware, and allowed me to find a distro that I liked and wanted to use. It just feels like a more isolated experience, which is a good thing. It's just you able to decide how you want to use your system and has an actual functional search feature. But does that mean I would want to run Linux on my desktop PC for video editing, streaming, and gaming? Fuck no. Just in my peripheral, I've been exposed to all the complications that can arise and I don't even think Adobe products work on Linux, meanwhile Photoshop and Premiere are a main part of my workflow. And I know, bad company, but the neat part is, you don't have to pay for them. So specifically Linux fills a niche for me, and I'm glad I tried it out, and 
If I ever find myself wanting to procrastinate for a while, I may dip into Arch, although I don't really have an interest in coding, so before I get flamed for not fully experiencing Linux, just keep that in mind. So now that I bought a ThinkPad and installed Linux, does this mean I've become the productivity master who will never yield to my ADHD tendencies again? No, definitely not. But when it comes to any form of self-improvement or enforcing a habit, there's a big difference between discipline and realism. And just because you're not living an idyllic lifestyle in the complete protocol of, say, Andrew Huberman or Brian Johnson, doesn't mean you don't have discipline. And that's not to say these talking heads don't have good advice sometimes. Getting enough sleep, eating right, exercising, these are all objectively healthy things that anyone could benefit from. But you'll only ever get value if you're able to recognize some level of individualism and meet your goals halfway. Meaning, it's better to understand yourself and what comes easy rather than trying to force yourself into practicing habits that feel unnatural you know, because you heard some guru on the internet say it is. Say you want to do more cardio, and you hear someone say, well, running in the morning is the best thing you can do. But you hate running and waking up early. You're probably not going to keep that habit only relying on self-discipline. But maybe you like basketball and have free time in the evenings and live near a public park. That would be a much more realistic and sustainable solution to getting in more cardio. So my target for improvement is writing. It's something I enjoy, it's a creative process, I'd like to write a fiction novel someday, and it's important for work. Yet I find it incredibly difficult to sit down and do sometimes. But I know that my habits can be improved with novelty, so instead of ignoring that inclination and making writing very boring, solely relying on discipline, I like to try new writing software, switch up Obsidian themes, write in a physical notebook, changing scenery, which I think actually helps the quality of the writing as well. And this ThinkPad and Linux experiment are not the end-all be-all solution, but just a new experience to keep writing and life interesting. And if you can relate to this in some other hobby or facet of life, I don't mean you need to be constantly buying things and feeding a consumer addiction, rather just have new experiences and trick yourself into getting shit done with novelty. At least that's what works for me. But at the end of the day, nothing is going to help you more than just sitting down, limiting your distractions, and doing the work. So crafting an environment which makes that act more enticing and easy can be a helpful step in pursuing your goals.